Good afternoon. I like growing cactus, but uh, cactus and succulents tend to have um, special needs when it comes to potting mix. Most uh, cactus and succulent potting mixes are like this, where they really have a large percentage of aggregate. In this case, it's perlite. Once I found out about using charcoal as a soil amendment, I realized that it's kind of like an aggregate with benefits. And it has some of the properties of, say, like organic matter, but also of aggregates. And uh, I just think it's, you know, really super useful for growing cactus and succulents, but, you know, also other stuff. So most of my potting mixes like this here are 50% charcoal, approximately. You can see how black that is. And my plants, my cactus do really well in that. But I've also planted some cactus in straight charcoal, like this one and that one. And we're gonna take a look at those today and how the roots are interacting with the charcoal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quick look at charcoal itself and the rationale for using it and why it might make a good aggregate or aggregate with benefits for growing uh, cactus and succulents. We're gonna take these apart, take a look at the roots and how that's interacting with the charcoal. And then we're gonna crush up some charcoal and repot all these little desert cacti into straight charcoal in larger pots, let them grow out for, you know, years or whatever to uh, see how they turn out. Okay, number one, it provides drainage. So the reason that cactus mixes have a high proportion of aggregate is because it provides drainage. So basically by having a bunch of chunky stuff in your mix, uh, it creates more air spaces in the soil. The water drains through and out of those air spaces, leaving, you know, aeration and good drainage. So it also holds water, but it's like an aggregate that provides drainage that also holds water. Now this little white stuff, perlite, which is, is kind of like artificial pumice, um, it's sort of like, uh, you could think of it as popcorn made from rocks. It's very porous and it'll hold some water too, so it's actually a little bit similar. But it seems almost contradictory that you'd want both something that provides drainage but also holds water, but it's really not, because what you get is you get these little guys absorbing water that the cactus can grab onto and use, but it still leaves a lot of airspace in between those, you know, chunks of charcoal. So we have both good drainage, but also water holding capacity. However, charcoal seems, in my experience, to lose its water pretty quick. Now that could be bad depending on the plant you're growing and how much charcoal you use. If you have a really high proportion of charcoal, it will actually tend to dry out uh, pretty quick. But with cactus, that's kind of a good thing. The thing about cactus is most cactus don't mind a lot of water. They mind sitting in water, right? They mind being soggy. They mind having their bases and their roots wet all the time. But it's not like they're like, oh, stop watering me. I love to be dry for months at a time necessarily. If you really grow them and pump them up, you know, with water and nutrients, they tend to just grow pretty fast and seem pretty happy as long as they don't stay soggy and rot. So in that case, when you think about, you know, these three things combined where it holds water, but it provides drainage, but it loses that water relatively quickly, as long as you're not planting it in charcoal powder and you do have the aggregate effect, I see that as basically a good thing for cactus. And that's been, you know, my experience that that property is useful. Charcoal also holds nutrients. I've never done the research to figure out which nutrients it holds. Uh, definitely nitrogen. And it seems to make that available to the plants later after a period where the charcoal kind of sucks up a bunch of nutrients that are not available to the plant, but then it gets full or something like that and it starts to provide uh, nutrients back to the plant. Think about, you know, fertilizing your pots and you definitely have to fertilize stuff growing in charcoal. There's not much in the way of nutrients in here that a plant can really grow on. So when you're feeding like a liquid, you know, fertilizer to a potted plant, some of that liquid's probably gonna run out and run out the bottom, but charcoal is like a filter. So if you get a water filter, there's a good chance it has a bunch of carbon, you know, similar to this inside, a little bit different, a little more high tech, but pretty much the same idea. So by creating a pot like this, like say this one, which is 50% charcoal, as the nutrients and water going through, that charcoal hopefully is grabbing onto those nutrients like a filter, but still providing them back to the plant when the plant needs them. Another thing that people say about charcoal a lot is that all this pore space provides places for microorganisms to live. So that could be yeast or, you know, bacteria or whatever. I always say it's kind of like an apartment complex, all these little, little holes in there. So that's a commonly claimed benefit of charcoal. And a lot of people will say that that's the main benefit of using charcoal in soil or a potting mix. 
there's a phenomenon you may have noticed if you ever grow potted plants where you grow your plant in a potting mix for some years and eventually like the pot is only half full of soil. Some of that may have migrated out the bottom, like through the holes, but a lot of it is because the organic matter in there, which is usually either peat moss, coconut core, or shredded bark of some kind, like a tree bark, fir bark, or something, that stuff's actually rotting and breaking down and leaving and going away. So by having a high percentage of aggregate, this stuff is a permanent investment. This stuff really doesn't break down easily. You know, this is gonna be in my potting mix, which I can keep recycling to make more potting mix for a very long time. That's definitely a, a good benefit. That's true of all other aggregates too, you know, like whether you're using sand or rocks or perlite or something like that. You can make it. Um, if you don't have the situation, like you have a city backyard and you can't get away with making charcoal in your backyard, well, you know, that's, that's an exception. But if you live in the country or, you know, have a place where you can burn stuff in a barrel or whatever, you can actually make your own uh, aggregate for potting mix, which is pretty cool. Products like perlite, have a very high energy footprint you know that the stuff has to be mined and then it's cooked at a high temperature with uh, you know fossil fuels but with charcoal you're usually using the calories in the wood to convert the wood to charcoal so there's not like a extra energy input at this point charcoal is quite a bit more than perlite but eventually that's probably going to change as charcoal becomes more popular for use in agriculture and i wouldn't be surprised if eventually it's cheaper i think that it probably should be cheaper if it was, if everything was scaled up and it was produced efficiently. I may have missed taking this one out of the pot. I don't know, the camera might not have been on. But you can see how like in the areas where there's a lot of root hairs, like on the little side roots, there's just a, like a lot of chunks and, you know, mostly small, but some larger ones too of charcoal because the root hairs are growing right into that charcoal to get those nutrients and water. So we're just gonna recycle the mix from that, uh, not mix, it's just charcoal. And we're gonna put this one in here so let's go get some more charcoal and talk about pre-charging and the need to add a lot of nutrients to the charcoal in the beginning. So what this is, is charcoal that's been charged up with nutrients, um, mostly nitrogen, but some other stuff like kelp extract and just like some other fertilizers. You don't have to do that. You can plant into straight char right out of the fire, but it's not gonna provide anything significant for your plants. You need to fertilize a lot, like maybe twice a week until that charcoal is charged up. If you're gonna do it like this where I pre-charged it, you just use like a lot of fertilizer and you can use extra fertilizer because the charcoal is gonna absorb just so much and then it'll stop. And then you can rinse the charcoal and it just has whatever it absorbed from that, that uh, fertilizer you put in. So I like to have some powder, like I want a straight run of kind of crushed charcoal like this. Roughly crushed, all different sizes, still provides drainage, but also some, you know, fine stuff. So again, you can use charcoal just straight out of the fire. I've done it. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if both of these cactus are in just straight charcoal right out of the fire that wasn't charged. Just fertilize it a lot with a balanced liquid fertilizer. You could also use urine, just peat and a you know, jar or something and dilute that and pour a little bit on regularly until you think it's charged up. Don't overdo it because you might burn the plant with too much nitrogen because urine is very high in nitrogen, but that's also the thing that I'm sure the charcoal absorbs a lot of. And I don't mind burying this way up, you know, on the base. Uh, it's not gonna rot because it has such excellent drainage, just these big chunks of stuff in here. Okay, I'm gonna try to put this one in here because I have a feeling it's just going to keep dividing like this and take up a lot of space. They take out some of these really big chunks here. I don't really want this. And I want to put these in pretty big pots so I don't have to repot them for quite a while. Okay, so with these guys, I really don't want this soil at all. And I don't want to take off so much that I severely damage the root. So I don't care if there's like a little still clinging on, but I want to get most of it off. That looks really good. And I have no idea what any of these are. They're just cool little cactus that are at my local hardware store for like three bucks each. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. I'm going to get a bunch of these and do an experiment. Also a great excuse to buy a bunch of cute little cactus that I can write off my taxes. Ta-da! White as a feather. Another thing I'll usually do is in the bottom of the pot, I'll take one piece of charcoal and use it to sort of plug up the hole there. 
it really pays to take a minute to get your cactus centered. They look pretty bad if they're not centered. So I'm gonna water these in with straight water just because there could be a lot of ash in this charcoal, so probably not too bad. And I don't worry about that a lot, but I just kind of want to flush whatever's in there through that's going to leave easy. Within the next couple days, I'll hit them with a fertilizer. Even though this charcoal's already charged up, you know, I think they could use just, a, I'll just do like a W111 fertilizer. Maybe do that once a week for a little while. And yeah, I just want to really fill these up and flush them out. One thing about charcoal is if you fill your pots up, it floats and some of it could even spill out. It's very porous and light and floaty. Check this little guy out. Isn't that cool looking? Echinofossilo cactus. I love it when botanists have a sense of humor. I put in one San Pedro here, Trichocereus. These like quite a bit of water. They're not really like a desert cactus. I've tried to grow them this way before and it didn't really work that great, but I just want to see how this one does if I keep up with fertilizing and watering and everything. Now keep in mind that this experiment is really just to find out what happens. Collect data without a real, any particular real hypothesis or anything like that. I'm not trying to prove that, you know, Pure charcoal is the best thing to grow a cactus in or anything like that. I just want to see if it works. I'm curious. People in gardening get really paranoid. They really like negative information and transmitting negative information. So you might say, oh, I wonder if you could grow charcoal, you know, cactus in pure charcoal. And someone might be like, oh, you can't. It's way too alkaline. It's too much ashes, you know. It's too much this. It'll take all the nutrients. There are no nutrients, whatever. I'll just kind of armchair stuff. Well, I'm just gonna find out what actually happens so that, you know, if that discussion comes up, this experiment has already been done. Okay, here's a, just a bunch of Trichocereus cactus that uh, the vast majority of these are growing in 50% charcoal mixes. And the rest is pretty much organic matter, sometimes some oyster shell, sometimes some perlite because it came in the potting mix base that I was using. It's very healthy and it grows really well and it drains well and it doesn't stay soggy for too long if you overwater it. So I don't really have to worry too much about watering them very frequently. Like I can water these a lot every other day or every third day and they're very happy and they grow. It just makes them grow a lot, especially if you, you know, if you keep giving them fertilizer. Any potted plant, no matter what the, the mix is, it's only gonna last so long before you're gonna have to start fertilizing it, so. That's just the reality of potted plants. The organic matter can break down and provide some nutrients, but um, you know, only so much. So you're still gonna have to feed them anyway. Ah. 